Hello, hello, hello. Guess what this is. Yeah, you're so smart, aren't you? This is the book that I used at MIT every time that I lectured 802, Electricity and Magnetism. All physics courses start with an 8 and the 2 indicate that it is the second course in physics. My videos are from the spring of 2002. I lectured it many times before that, but the videos that are on this channel are from the spring of 2002. I know that the original idea was that below the thumbnails of the videos you could find the assignments and the solutions and sometimes the exams and also lecture notes. That doesn't seem to be working so well anymore. And so I decided that I would make videos that cover all the assignments as well as the solutions. If you keep watching, you will soon see the solutions of all 802 assignments. Yeah, this is the book. Physics for Scientists and Engineers with Modern Physics. Well, that part I may not cover. There's more in this book than I cover. Douglas John Coley, 3rd edition. Be aware of the fact that to do this is an enormous amount of work for me, but I have decided that it's worth it because since these PDF files are no longer reliable, it would be terrible if we lose all that information. So, get ready for all the assignments and then you will also find the solutions of all 11 homework assignments. Every week there is a homework assignment and there were 11 in 802. Electricity and magnetism. One of my preferred courses. All right. Have a nice day. Take care. We'll be friends. And why don't you take 802? You could. I'm sure you will be able to do well which cannot be said for all of you when you take 803. But we're talking now about 802. Uh, this is the book that I used for 802. Physics for Scientists and Engineers by Douglas Giancoli, Prentice Hall, I used the third edition and you see the ISBN number. And so in the assignments I use often problems from Giancoli, I reference the number of the problem and often the pages as well. 802. Assignment number one. The first problem is a classic. <laughs> I know the answer by, by heart.
So the problems are from Giacconi. R14 is also a classic. I get the dipole. Spherical charge shells, well, all of that. Borderlines high school, but that's the first assignment. Eight oh two assignment two. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's always a great problem when you deal with conductors. Things are interesting. Connection is electric potentials. Breakdown field, a million volts per meter at one atmosphere. Ooh. Eight oh two. Assignment number three. Capacitors all over the place. Not so difficult. Now dielectrics come in, that makes it a little harder. And now you deal with various symmetries, cylindrical symmetry and spherical symmetry. Ah, oh, the Van de Graaff. <laughs> I've done so many gorgeous, fabulous demonstrations with Van de Graaffs. Classic circuits, nothing special. Eight oh two, assignment number four. Oh, <laughs> the famous Kelvin water dropper. A spectacular demo. You really want to see that in my lectures. Many problems from Giancoli. Giancoli. Eight oh two. Assignment number five. Transmission lines. Ah, oh, we're getting into Ampere's law now. Currents create magnetic fields. Which, by the way, is due to special relativity, whether you like it or not. Eight oh two. Assignment number six. Oh, displacement current. That's always <laughs> difficult. A difficult topic for most of you, because it's not a real current, it's, the name is a misnomer. And 
self-inductance of a toroid. Now we get into circuits, RL circuits, another RL circuit. Not too hard, this assignment. 802, assignment number 7. Transformers. RC circuits. They're easy. Oh, this is a classic 7.5. Again, RC circuits. Not so difficult, this assignment. 802, assignment 8. Ah, now we're getting into the real, real electricity and magnetism. LRC circuits. That's becomes interesting because it's very non-intuitive some of the behavior is bizarre oh yeah we get into resonances of course oh we go back to traveling waves and on a string Standing waves. Timing. Sound. Ah, oh, design of a flute. Musical instruments. <laughs> yeah, I always try to get those in if I can. 802, assignment 9. Hmm, radio waves. Oh, traveling EM waves. Wow, that's already sophisticated. Of course, I come back to that very heavily in 803. Index of refraction. Oh, we get Snell's law. Soon, EM waves. Oh, my favorite law is Faraday's law. Faraday's law runs our entire economy. Think about that. Because with Faraday's law, we can convert mechanical energy into electricity only because of Faraday's law. Standing waves, a little bit mathematical. Ah, we got to do polarization. I do lots of demonstrations on polarization. Our ah, radiation pressure, that is already subtle. Yeah, the rest mass of photons is zero. They have no mass, photons, but they do have momentum. And therefore, if light is absorbed by an object, that object experiences a momentum from the photons has no mass photons but they do have momentum oh there comes Snell's law very good 802 assignment number 10 oh, I'm announcing my last lecture farewell special 
Now we're dealing with polarization. I teach you how you can make linearly polarized light at home using the Brewster angle. You can reflect light off glass. I don't derive the Brewster angle in this lecture, but I do derive it in lecture 18 of 803. I do lots of demonstrations, by the way, in 802 lectures using the Brewster angle. And then the classic question, if you have polarized sunglasses, would the direction of polarization be in this direction, or in this direction, or in this direction, and why? Ah, oh, there are it. Small pieces of polarizers. Here is, I have two of them. Always carry two with me. You may not know, you may never have thought about it, that the light from my screen is linearly polarized in this direction. You can look through it, right? Because this linear polarizer is also polarized in this direction. But now look. There you go. <laughs> Black. Yeah. And now you can see through it. You can have great fun with linear polarizers. I always carry two on me. I use them when I watch rainbows. You should know why. I look at the blue sky. Because at 90 degree angles of the sun, the blue light is linearly polarized. You can check that with a polarimeter like this. More about the Brewster angle. And then circularly polarized light. Wow! I cover a lot. Assignment number 11. 802. Single slit diffraction. Ah! <laughs> I do the demonstration, of course, in class. Oh, we're dealing with gratings. <laughs> I always carry on me gratings. This is my grading. I always have it with me. And I always have two linear polarizers with me. Yeah, you see how you use a grating. When I look at the lights in my room, stunning. I'm doing it right now. 